Okay, tonight we're going to talk about formulas in the Bible they did. Formulas, which sometimes they use today, which I'm going to explain that as we get to them. But there's like anointing with oil. And here we're going to find in Acts 5, chapter 14 and 15. It says, And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women, and so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on the beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing might by might overshadow some of them. But what they were saying is Peter was healing people. And back then they were used to healing because, like I said, Jesus was healing everybody. After Jesus left, uh, the disciples started healing people. And the people are saying right here, hey, if we can just get the shadow of these, get the sick people, if we can get them where the shadow of Peter would pass over them, that it would heal them. But it doesn't say that it healed them, does it? Because if we read it correctly, that last sentence there says that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might, might overshadow some of them, meaning might heal them which it never did say. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it did heal them. But this is what the people were thinking. If we could just get the shadow of Peter to go over these people that are sick, it might heal them. It might. But this is not a, this is not a healing. This is what, just what the people were thinking. But some people, some preachers, they either take that word might out of there or they just ignore it. But right here it says that it might heal him, but it didn't. Because like I said, nowhere in the Bible does it show that it did heal him. The people were just hoping that the shadow of Peter would heal them. So that formula, is not a, it's out. The next one is in Acts. Okay, in Acts 19, verses 11 and 12. And God brought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought onto the sick handkerchiefs, aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now, the first thing I want to show here is this was a special, special miracle. It says special here. Special means this is just going to happen once, because this is a special one. All right? The, the main word here is special. It's not an ordinary healing. It's a special one. If this was the way of being healed, if we could just take a handkerchief or something from a God of a man of God like Paul was, a man, a man of God, if we could do that, then we should be doing that today. Get a handkerchief from some godly man and go lay it on the sick and they would get healed. Well, that's not happening. Now, we have preachers again, if you send them so much money, they'll send you a handkerchief or an apron. It's supposed to be blessed kind of like some people believe in holy water, which is not true, it's the same as that. They think these handkerchiefs or these aprons are blessed by God, and if you use them, people will get, get healed. Well, if that was true, then we should be getting a lot of people healed. But in Matthews chapter 9, verses 20 and 22, it says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him, talking about Jesus, we're talking about Jesus here, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. He didn't say because she touched his garment, he got, she got healed. He said, your faith has made you healed. Right? That's what this... Well, again, I'm showing here garments, just like over, right here. This was a special time. And the handkerchief at that time did. Because it says it right here. And the, the disease departed from him back in Acts 19. So, but this was a special time. I mean, plainly says, God plainly said, God brought a special miracle. Now, who is greater Jesus or Paul? Jesus. Jesus is greater. So if this was so, wouldn't if it had happened right here with Jesus? The woman touched his garment, but she wasn't made whole by touching his garment. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Amen? Amen. 
Also, at that time, they didn't have they didn't have the New Testament like we have. They didn't have they had the Old Testament to read, but they didn't have the new, like we have the New Testament. We know what happened, what what God has done, and and how He works. They didn't have the New Testament. So when a man was preaching, they didn't know if he was a man of God or not because they didn't have this to check him out, the Bible, right? So back then, God used signs and wonders to show that these men, like Paul, the disciples and Paul, he gave them sign, signs and wonders so people could see, yes, they were men of God. That's why they had signs and wonders back then so people could see that. We have the Bible today. The reason Jesus did this was because in John 4, verses 48, Then Jesus said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. So that's why he was giving them these signs and wonders. Because if he didn't give them the, all these miracles, like feeding the, uh, the people, the 5,000, healing everyone like he was, if he hadn't done this, these people wouldn't be following Jesus. They were following Jesus because he was healing them. Now, when they took him to trial, what were they hollering? Kill him. Crucify him. Why? Because that's what the religious leaders told him to do. They followed the religious leaders instead of Jesus. Jesus wasn't given anymore. There, he was, he, he, like the Bible says, he didn't even look like a man anymore. So why did they want to follow him? He, would, he got beat up so bad, why would they follow him? So they started listening to the religious leaders. And they started saying, crucify him. So back here, yeah, he had to show them these signs and wonders, but were, that's the only reason they were following him. Because he was giving, healing, feeding. That's how come he had a big crowd. Now some of them, I'm not sure some of them were believers. Some of them did believe that he was the Messiah, the Son of God, okay? But today, that's not the way it is today. Because in John 6, 44, it says, No man can come to me except the Father with which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. So right here, the scriptures is telling us the only way you're coming to the Father is by Jesus drawing you. We no longer have signs and wonders. Now when we come to the Lord, it's because Jesus is drawing you. And plus, signs and wonders, people say, well, if Jesus would just show me a sign, that's a bunch of baloney. They're still not going to believe if you don't come to Jesus because, just because you love him, because he died for your sins, you ain't going to come to him. But right here, the Lord says, now it's not signs and wonders. Now you're drawn by the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9, and then verse 14. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is a, at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. And these laid a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And let me, sh let me show you this first. The angel, he's not the one that's doing the healing. Because you have, I'm pointing all this out to you because we have people who say that. The angels did it. It's not the angels did, the angels did no healing. They, all the angel did was stir the water up. That's all, he, that's all the angel did. I was about to say he, angels have no, no sex. It's not male or female. I believe and when it says a certain season, I believe this season was the Passover. Because in verse 1, remember it says that it was the Feast of the Jews, and that was Passover. So I believe at this season, that's when the angel would come, stir up the water, and whoever got in it would get healed. And in verse 5, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? So Jesus is saying, Do you want to be healed? Okay, that's what he's saying. How did Jesus know that this man had been there a long time? God gave him 
God gave him, just like many other times, God gave him a word of knowledge. In the Bible you hear about the gift, the word of knowledge. Well, that's what, that's what it is. God shows not only Jesus here, but it's today also. God told Jesus that this man had been there a long time with this disease. Because Jesus didn't know this man from when he was young. He was just passing by. So God gave Jesus a word of knowledge and said, Hey, this man has been this way for 38 years. 1 Corinthians 12, 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So there's a word of knowledge. God gives word of knowledge to people. And I've said that before. Word of knowledge is when you hear from the Lord and He tells you to do something. All right? This is what He told Jesus here. And you have to hear from God to heal someone. It has to come from Him. It's a word of knowledge from the Lord. Jesus said unto this man, Do you want to be healed? Notice all those people there. All those people there, why were they there? To get healed. They wanted to get healed. But he looked, he went to this one man. It says there was a multitude there. So there was a lot of people there who wanted to get healed. But Jesus went to this one man and asked him, do you want to be healed? Verse 7. The impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. Now, if I was sick for 38 years, and Jesus says to me, do you want to be healed? What do you think I would say? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'll probably yell it. Yes, you Lord. But this guy, he starts blah, 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 blah. Why he hasn't been able to get in the water. Jesus asks him, do you want to be healed? And he comes with his, these excuses why he hasn't been able to get in the water. We do the same thing. Okay? We do the same thing. God tells us something. And we give them excuses why we can't do it. Remember, the Word of God, this is, this is a story in the Bible, a true story. And it's talking about healing. But in all the, in all the verses, all of God's words, they don't, not, we're talking about healing here. But the verses show us more than just healing. Like right here, he's showing us right here, hey, I asked the man if he wanted to be healed. And he come up with these excuses. It might be talking about one thing, but there's other things in there that God is trying to show us. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Verse 8. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Notice that Jesus completely ignored the excuse he gave. And he told him, Rise, get up and walk. The Lord doesn't want to hear all these excuses we got on why we don't do whatever he says to has told us to do. He don't want to hear those excuses. He completely ignored what that guy said. He says, hey, get up and walk. <sighs> Jesus tells us to do things that we can't do on our own power. Why do you think he gave us the Holy Spirit? Because without the Holy Spirit, we can't do these things. But when you believe God's words, the Holy Spirit gives you the power. But it's our choice if we want to use that power. It's up to us. I've got Jesus living in me. Do I want to use the power he's given me or don't I? It's up to us. He doesn't make us use his power. You hear me? Now this guy, he could have said, I can't. No, I don't want to be healed. And guess what? He would have lost a blessing. He could have, instead of just making excuses on why he couldn't get in the water, he could have just told Jesus, no, I don't want to be healed. And he would have lost the blessing of being able to walk again. Because he didn't listen to the Lord. Think about how many blessings we're missing out on when we don't listen and obey the word of God. Jesus didn't ask him to get up. Jesus commanded him to get up. He says, rise, get up, and walk. He didn't ask him to do that. He told him to do that. When he gives us a command and we disobey it, when you disobey the word of God, what are you doing? Sinning. When you disobey the word of God, you're sinning. Believe the Word of God and see what blessings you're going to get. See what blessings you get when you obey God's words. Now, did you notice that Jesus didn't use water to heal him? I mean, the water is right there, right? The angel stirred it up, and the Bible says whoever got in it would get healed. 
But did he send the man to the water? Hmm. God commanded the illness be gone, and it was gone. We need to learn from that. Jesus the one is the one that heals, not formulas. I know this right here it says to get in the pool and they would get healed. But again, again, I gave you the reason why they were doing this back then. Back then, God had to use signs and wonders so these people could believe. We don't have that today. That's not for today. God does not use signs and wonders for today. But he used it back then. But we don't need formulas for people to get healed. All God has to say is be healed and we're healed. No longer do we have to wait for something to happen if we want to get healed. This was happening that time. It was during the Jewish feast at that time. People don't know, they, they don't understand or know how to separate the scriptures. Some scriptures that are just for back then, preachers are trying to use them as of today. Just like the handkerchief. Preachers are using that today. That was just for back then. That is not for today. They're doing it because they're making money off of it. People who don't read the Bible, people that have no idea what the Word of God says, they're believing this man because he's got the title pastor. Because he has that title, they believe whatever he says is true. The Bible says there's many wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. There's going to be a lot of pastors out there that are wolves. All they want is your money. You hear me? The Bible says that. And the only way you're going to notice the wolf is when you read the Bible yourself. When you read and study the Bible. Then you'll know a wolf when you see him or when you hear him. Because remember, a wolf is dressed just like a sheep, a shepherd. He looks like a preacher. He talks like a preacher. But he's a wolf. This is the New Testament. And in verse 13, it says that the man didn't even know who Jesus was. In verse 13, this man that got healed didn't even know who Jesus was. Now again... These men who go around and say, you didn't have enough faith. That's how come you wasn't healed. Well, what did they do with this? This man had no faith. None. And, he, and Jesus healed him. So what did they do with these verses? They just don't ever preach on them. That's what they do. It was God's grace that healed this man, not faith. It was God's grace and love for this man that healed him. And guess what? He was a jerk. Jesse, how can you say this guy was a jerk? Well, he was by that pool for 38 years. For 38 years, and nobody would take him to the water. Why wouldn't they take him to the water? He didn't have no family. He didn't have any friends. Now, who the people who don't have, well, family, they don't accept them or, <laughs> or friends, or you don't have any friends, well, you must be, you must be a jerk. If you don't have any friends or family. You hear me? I mean, this guy was there for 38 years. And nobody took him to the water. So I would take it nobody liked him. It makes sense to me. What I'm trying to show here is that we ought not to think we deserve healings. Because this man, if anybody didn't deserve a healing, it was probably this guy right here. One, he didn't even, he had no faith. Two, he was probably a jerk. And I just showed you why. But guess what? None of us deserve healings. Just like I said a while ago, none of us deserve to be saved. We don't deserve anything but hell. Because we all know how we were, and we all know how we still are. But we all, those of us who are Christians know that, hey, we need, we need to get up every morning and say, Lord, give me strength today that I don't do something stupid or do what the devil wants me to do. And in verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now, when it says someone got healed and it was immediately, that's a divine healing from God. God, when he heals you, he heals you, he heals you on the spot. Right then and there, you're healed. That's when God does it. That's a divine healing. That's from God. When something happens right then and there, that's from the Lord. Now verse 14 shows 
that the man also got saved. Because it says in verse 14, Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple. That's the church. After all this happened, Jesus found him in the church. And said it unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Now what he's saying now, don't sin anymore. He's not saying, you, okay, I want you to be sinless. He's just saying, don't go out there and sin on purpose. Like, oh, I know this is wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's what I'm talking about. Because we're all still sinners. And unless a worse thing will come upon you. So you, not, you being uh, sick the way you were, something worse could come upon you if you're not walking with me. Which I've taught that earlier. I've taught on that earlier. You're not walking with the Lord. And you can't blame it on God. So there are really no formulas to guarantee healings. Those people who use formulas, those preachers, there is no guarantee. Right here I'm showing you in the scriptures why they were happening then. Anointing with oil, which I talked at the very beginning, that's not a guarantee you're going to get healed. God says to do this, but it doesn't. he's not saying, now I'm obligated. Now I'm obligated to heal you because you did this. We can't make God do anything. You hear me? We can't make him do we can't make him do anything. If any of these were still around, then we ought to go take these handkerchiefs, these aprons or whatever, and go put them on everybody in the hospital. Because I just showed you this man didn't have no faith. So we can go in the hospital, oh it's okay, you don't have no faith. God heals anyway. Right? We just saw that. So why don't we take these handkerchiefs and go lay them on everybody? Because it ain't going to work because it's not God's way. People had, I've showed you where people had no faith, but then I've showed you where people had faith. If there's no faith, God heals. If there's faith, God still heals. If there's anointing with oil, sometimes he heals, sometimes he does. If there's a pool back then, if there's handkerchiefs, but none of these... No faith, faith, none of these is a guarantee, is an obligation for God to heal you. It is in God's will if you get healed or not. It is His will. When I pray for someone who's sick, I say, Lord, I'll pray and say, Lord, would you heal this person? But then I always end with saying, God, I want your will to be done. This is what I'm wanting, but I want your will to be done. And I say that all the time. Because my, what I want, probably ain't the same thing what God wants. Okay? That's why we should always pray, let your will be done, Lord. Even though I want this, but I want your will before anything else. You hear me? That's the way we should pray. That's, we tell them what we want, but then we let them know, but your will is more important. Amen? There's only one who can heal, and that's the Lord. And he doesn't need all these formulas to heal, like I said. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 39, it says, See now that I, even I, this is God speaking, am He, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So God just, He just said right here, He said, I can let you die, or I can keep you alive. That's what he's saying right here. Yeah, I can kill, or I can heal you. God said, I can let you die, or I can keep you alive. That's God. He is God. Remember that. He is God. He can also allow sickness. He said it. I can allow you to be sick, or I can heal your sickness. God, had, God can do whatever he wants. How many of us know that God can do whatever he wants? <laughs> Amen. God can do whatever He wants. But these formulas that I just went over, I hope I, you saw why they were there in the Bible at that time and how they're not for today anymore. Now, is healing for today? Now, I've been saying all this that was back then, but it's healing for today. Now, I'm going to be reading the New Testament. This is not out of the Old Testament. This is the New Testament. Jesus has just read the prophet Isaiah in the Scripture. Okay, he's in the temple, Jesus is in the temple, and he's reading from the prophet Isaiah. He's reading the scriptures. And in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 21, in verse 18, the scriptures that he read said, 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now this is, was Jesus quoting the scriptures in the church. This is what Jesus was doing, okay? Verse 20, And he, Jesus, closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue, meaning church, were fastened on him. Verse 21, And he began to say unto them, Now listen, Jesus said unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. What was Jesus saying? This, this, what the Lord was saying here, up here, talking about the, the anointed one, this is talking about the Messiah. This is talking about the Son of God. This is talking about the Christ who was going to come and do all this. This is what this scripture was saying. This is what he was reading from the Old Testament. And when, and when he got through, he, Jesus said this to the religious leader and everybody that was in there. This day is this scripture fulfilled. What Jesus was saying, I am this person. What I just read, that's me. I mean, two things here. One, yes, this is for today. This is what Jesus came for, to do this for us. Two, religious leaders heard this and didn't accept it. There were religious leaders there, heard this, and didn't accept it. Called them the devil. So yes, healing is for today, because it says in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the, words, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So Jesus said, hey, greater works than what I'm doing? What did Jesus do? He healed people. He fed 5,000. He said, greater works than this you're going to do. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, how can you get greater than that? You can't get greater than that, raising someone from the dead. So what he was saying right here, greater works you're going to do? What he's saying here is, I, I'm only able to do it right here in Israel. Right here in Jerusalem, around me, I can do these things. But you're going to be able to do it around the world. I mean, we have churches, we send missionaries to other countries, right? That's what he's talking about. We're going to spread, we're going to be able to spread it out further. That's what he's talking about. Greater, a greater area we're going to be able to reach. He didn't mean greater as, okay, beat, raising someone from the dead, beat that. You can't. So he's not talking about anything greater like that. He's just talking about it's going to be greater area that we can cover. That's what he's talking about. So, Everything that Jesus did back then, all these things I just read to you, he said, you're going to be able to do it too. So it is for today. Heal, that's for today. So I'm just trying to show you, healing is for today. Now I'm reading out of Acts, which is still today. The book of Acts, we're still living in the book of Acts today. This God's time of grace started in the book of Acts, and it's still going up until the rapture. So even though in the book, in the Bible, the book of Acts has a has an ending, but it didn't end there. We're still living in the time of Acts. Where we are disciples and we're doing everything that disciples well, we're supposed to be doing everything the disciples did. We're still living in the time of grace. Just like the ones in Acts did. I just wanted to point that out. Now in the books of Acts, in the book of Acts, Chapter 3, verses 2 and 6. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked of, for alms, which alms means money. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. God had Peter to stop and notice this man. Why? Because God gave Peter what? A word of knowledge. God said, Peter, stop. I want, you to, I want you to stop and heal this man. Now, this man didn't know it at the time. But just like the father told Jesus everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus didn't know. Jesus, the father told him. 
the night before he was crucified, when he went and, and he sweat blood, he was so he was such under such agony, the Bible says he sweat blood when he was praying to the Father. Now this can happen today. A person can sweat blood, but they've never known anybody to survive it. It's a fatal thing. But Jesus did survive it. <clears throat> but Jesus did the will of the Father. He said, Lord, if this can pass me, let it pass. But God said no. So Jesus went through it. He did everything in the power of the Father. What the Lord gave him the power to do. And the Bible says he didn't limit him. The Father didn't limit Jesus on what all he could do. So just like then, this is what happened to Peter. God told Peter, stop. Look at this man. I'm going to heal him. So he got a word of knowledge. And in verse 5, And he gave heed unto them, exceeding, expecting to receive something of them. So this man was expecting to get something from Peter and John. But he didn't know he was going to be healed. He got something greater than what he was expecting. He was asking for money. But the Lord gave him something greater than money. Sometimes we're asking for the wrong things that we need in our lives. This guy was asking for money. God says, huh, you need something more than money. I'm going to heal you. This happens today in our life. We'll pray for something, and we're praying for the wrong thing. When God, something has, when God has something better for us, we pray for, oh, Lord, give me, or ask for something, something little, and God says, no, I got this for you. You understand what I'm saying? Just like this guy here. He was want money. And God says, no, I'm going to heal you. Sometimes we think we didn't get what we asked for. God didn't answer our prayer. But he did. But it was in a greater way. And it was in a, a greater way. So we missed it. So God did something better than what we were wanting. You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? Amen. God, God is good. Verse 6, then Peter said, now listen to this. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I want us to see here that these men of God, Paul and Peter, men of God, who were preachers, had no money. Do you see that? I mean, they said it. Peter said, silver and gold, we don't have any. He said, we don't have any money. But we, what we do have is the word of God. Amen? Amen? Now, these preachers today, seriously, preachers today, $1,000 suits, driving Mercedes, BMWs, Jaguar. I'm just serious. That's what they're driving. These are these preachers that are asking for money for this, for that, for this, for that. What did God tell his disciples? Take nothing with you. Whatever you need, I will supply. These are men of God. Peter and John were disciples, men of God. And he says, we don't have any money. But preachers who have these suits and cars they drive and I don't know how many houses, you got to wonder, are they, are, are they in this for the money? Or are they really doing God's ministry? Now, I'm not saying a preacher has to be poor. A preacher, a preacher can live a very comfortable life. But when he has money to go spend on a thousand dollar suit, go drive a Mercedes, have a house here and have a house there and two, three story houses. I don't think that's from the Lord. I really don't think that's from the Lord. He'll he'll help you live comfortably. But to overdo it, that's that's these people are using God's money for their glory, for their own selves. And I'll say that to any preacher that is that way. Because right here, a man of God, Peter and John, men of God, had no money. But they did, they still did God's ministry. Amen? Amen. We need preachers like that. This man wasn't asking for a healing. Like I said, he was asking for money. This healing, again, has nothing to do with faith. Did he have faith? Was he going to him and saying, because he had faith, saying, heal me? No. So again, we have a man here who got healed, and it wasn't because of his faith. So do you see where I'm, I'm going? You do not have to have faith. These, notice Peter didn't pray for the healing. Peter didn't go over and say, let me pray for you. You know why? 
he got a word of knowledge. God told him what to do. When God tells you to do something, are you going to pray and say, Okay, Lord, do you want me to do this? You know, we're not going to ask if he wants it. He's already told us to do it. So they didn't have to pray for him. God told Peter and John, I'm going to heal that man. So they went over there and he got healed. But they didn't. The, Bible, the scriptures don't say they prayed for him. They just told him, rise up and walk. Amen? That's when it's from God. They heard God. They didn't have to pray about it. They just did it. Do you see the difference? When you hear from God to do something, you do it with authority. With authority. They said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They didn't go over there going, uh, in the name of you know. No, these men had, the Bible says they have boldness, right? Go out there with boldness. Why, Why do we go out there with boldness? Because with Jesus, Jesus lives in us. Is Jesus scared of anything? No. So if Jesus lives in us, why should we be scared of anything? Go out there with boldness. Don't be a wimp. God is not a wimp. And if God is living in you, you're not a wimp. You hear me? Amen? That's the truth. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. When God heals, He heals right then and there. That's my God. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Right away. Like I said before. Verse 8. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Walking and leaping and praising God. Remember verse 1? Shows that they were in the temple, the church. And what did he do? He was leaping, meaning jumping, and praising God. He was doing this in the church. Now, was he out of order? Believe it or not, we have churches today. They don't allow you to praise God. They don't allow you to lift your hands. They don't allow you to get up and, and jump. Oh, that's out of order. This guy did it in the church, praising God. There's times in the church when the pastor is telling us something in the scriptures that's even better than this. That's better than this healing. There's, there's many times that the pastor will preach the word of God and it's greater than this, what he says. And I look around and people are just sitting there like bumps on a log, just sitting there like he didn't even say nothing. The Lord said, quench not the spirit. When we sit there, now some of us are quenching the spirit because our spirit is, is receiving it, but we're quenching the spirit because we don't want to look out of order. Then some of us, we don't do nothing because we don't have the spirit to receive it because they're lost. They don't have the spirit to receive the, the word of God. You hear it? These churches that don't allow you to praise God, get out of it because they're telling you you need to sin. Don't praise the Lord here. Don't. We do everything in an orderly manner. Well, this guy was not in an orderly manner. He was jumping and leaping, praising God in the church. Did anybody tell him to sit down? Now listen to this now. That's when it's in the Spirit. If the Spirit leads you to say amen, glory to God, whatever. If the Spirit leads you to jump, to praise, whatever. If the Spirit leads you, do it. No matter what man thinks. Now, but if you're doing it because everybody else is doing it in the church, say you're in a Pentecostal church or a church like Pentecostal where everybody's just jumping and running and praising the Lord. If you're doing it because everybody else is doing it, that means you're doing it in the flesh. You're not doing it in the spirit. Now, when you do it in the flesh, that's wrong. But if the spirit leads you to do that, there's nothing wrong with doing it. It glorifies the Lord. You're pleasing God when you do that because you're showing him your praise to him. So those of you who are listening to this CD, if you're going to a church and your pastor said you can't get excited here, I'd leave. I would leave that church. Let's drop down to verse 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? Now we have people today, they have a preacher, they, he lays hand on somebody and they get healed or supposedly gets healed. You know, not everything you see on TV is true on these Christian stations. And I can give you an example. 
my I'm adopted, but my real mother, she had diabetes and she was she could have gone blind. She went to the church and they told her she was healed. She got off her medication and she almost did go blind because she got off her medication. But they told her she was healed and she believed it. Got off the medication and see what happened. Look what happened. So all this healing you see on TV is not all true. Okay? It's not all true. Preachers, and then everybody, oh, the preacher, the preacher. They didn't give glory to the Lord. They gave it to the man. And these men accept it. When you're a man of God, you don't accept praise from other men. But we do have men who are, who are that way. Instead, instead of them giving the glory to the Lord, they take it upon themselves. And just what I mean, I'm telling you to watch it on TV, but really don't watch it. Because all it is, is is lies. It's wolves. It's wolves that do that, who fake people out. They're in it for the money. That's why they're so rich, because people don't know the truth. They don't read the Bible, so they believe what they see. It wasn't because they were holy either. They said, we're not, we're not, this wasn't our power and it wasn't because we're so holy. That's what Peter and John are saying. We're holy when we let God lead us in our life. That's walking in the Spirit. That's when we're holy. When we're walking in the Spirit, we're holy. Okay? We're still sinners, but when we're walking in the Spirit, God looks at us as holy. Okay? But, the, but Peter and John said, we're not, we're not so holy, and that's why the, this man was healed. They were making sure that the people didn't look at them. They were making sure that all the glory went to God. Okay? That's what real men of God do. Verse 13. And then he's going to tell them who did the healing. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied, speaking to the religious leaders, ye denied the Holy One, the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. Now remember, Pilate says, okay, I'm going to let the people decide. They can, they can uh, holler for Jesus to be released or they can holler for Barabbas to be released, a murderer. And what did they do? They hollered for the murderer to be released. That's what he's talking about right here. Verse 15. And killed the prince of life, whom God has risen from the dead, whereof we are all witnesses. Now, he's just showing them who did this healing. God. And Jesus is God. The Trinity. Those of us who believe in the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they're all the same. But right here, is this any kind of positive preaching here? Is this positive preaching? You have a lot of that in the churches today. Positive thinking. Don't think anything negative. That's wrong. That's what they teach in the church today. Number one, the king of them all is Robert Schuller. Positive thinking. Now, when there's a wolf, I will name him by name. He is a wolf. Robert Schuller is a wolf. All his books that he's written, he don't give any glory, anything to the Lord. It's all him. It's positive thinking. Now, when a man of God does something wrong, I'm not going to mention his name. Because he is a man of God. But this is not a man of God. So if, I was, if I'm any kind of shepherd to y'all, if I see a wolf out there, I'm going to show him to y'all. Hey, there's a wolf. Stay away from him. What kind of shepherd would I be if I didn't tell you, hey, stay away from that wolf? What kind of shepherd would I be? Not very good. He's, he's letting the people know the sin they have committed. He's telling them. He's telling the religious leaders and the people that were there listening. He's telling them straight on, this is what you've done. Is there any, any uh, sugar, sugar, sugar coating this, this message? He didn't sugarcoat it at all. He said, this is what y'all did. Y'all killed the Son of God. Y'all killed the Holy One. How many preachers today sugarcoat their message because they don't want to offend anybody? If you belong to a preacher who does that, again, leave the church. Because you want to hear the truth of God. That's what you want to hear. If a man's going to go up there and just sugarcoat the truth of God, you don't need to be under him. Verse 16, And in his name, through faith in his name, 
hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him, talking about Jesus, hath given him, talking about the man, this perfect soundness in presence of you all. Now this is the New, New Testament. The gift of healing is done by faith of the healer, not the one getting healed. All the people who got healed, were, did they have faith? Like I just showed, did they have any faith? The faith comes to the one who's, praying, who's, who's doing the healing. That's just like I showed in James about anointing with all. The one who anoints with all, that's the one who has to have the faith. Not the person getting anointed, which I've showed that several times before this. But it's, it's the healer, it's the, it's the man that's praying over you. That's the one who has to have the faith. Not the one who is sick. Again, I'm showing you, faith does not heal you. I'm talking about the person who's sick. Faith does not heal you. You can have faith and you can get healed. You cannot have faith and still get healed. I keep showing this over and over. Remember in verse 12, Peter was very strong in the faith in Jesus. But he refuses to take any credit for that healing. He said the faith which is by him. Our faith comes from who? The Bible plainly says our faith, God gives us our faith. God gives us our faith. So if our faith heal, fails us, like these preachers say, you didn't have enough faith. If our faith fails us, then who's doing the failing? God? Because he's the one who gave it to us. Bible plainly says, your faith comes from the Lord. It's not by our faith. We don't have any. God says, I gave you that faith. It's from me. So when these people say your faith failed you, that's coming you wasn't healed, what they're saying is God has failed you because he didn't give you enough faith.